Would it be literally worse than that? I, I guess. So migraine headaches, it depends. So most migraine headaches are due to some kind of vasodilation, transient vasodilation, which we, we, we really still don't understand. Mm -hmm. um, in some cases, it's just like people who have asthma. Okay. You know, their, their, their chest is causes constricts when it, they call it hyperactive airway disease. Sometimes like people who are in the cold or exercise induced asthma, when they start exercising and their chest constricts down instead of opening up. And always like you get exposed to cold air and it causes the constriction instead of opening up. Um, you get the same thing in the brain with the blood vessels and sometimes it'll, it'll constrict versus dilate. When it dilates uncontrolled, then the fluid starts to accumulate. And as it accumulates in and around the meningi, then that's where you get the head pain. Mm -hmm. So yeah, there really isn't any pain associated with blood accumulating inside the brain. <laughs> that's what stays. So if it's happening, you don't even know it until it's too late and the headache comes on and by then it's just, because my aunt died. My other aunt, she had stroke because of it. So hypertension, they didn't want to take, you know, blood pressure medication. Thought she could just, you know, like typical Puerto Rican, think she cure everything with the bus, right? So is it possible to get so it's like Caribbean's, man. It's, <laughs> I love my peoples, but yeah, you can't cure everything with yedba. Yeah. So for example, you talked about um, the blood, you know, filling up the brain. Is it possible to that blood um, leak into the whites of your eyes or? Oh, right. Yeah, well, you have blood vessels in your eyes, and when they leak out, you'll see it. Your, your eye will be bloodshot. That's an indicator of a hypertensive crisis. It means your blood pressure got shot up too high, and the little delicate capillary couldn't hold them. And the blood just leaked out into the cord. That's not good. You see it. You see people with bloodshot, and the eyes are, you know, the blood all accumulated. That's different because remember, the eyeball is sitting not within the skull, it's sitting what? Outside the skull, in the orbit of the eye. Everyone agree? In the orbit of the eye, so fluid accumulation there wouldn't wouldn't cause brain damage, but it would lose. You could if it was severe enough, you could lose eyesight. You could lose your eyesight. So, right. Um, any other questions? So the skull and the men's intramembranous bone formation, the long bones and the chondral bone formation. Now let's talk about the vertebra. The vertebra, similar to, it's, it's like a combo. The vertebra is something special though. So can I erase this? Everybody cool with this? This would be on the video. You got me all up in the video. Is that, that was a reference to an, an MTV award where um, where West Coast rappers were like, yeah, any all rappers want to come to the West Coast and not be all up in the video. It was criticizing the East Coast rappers and P. Diddy for uh, him and uh, and uh, big big pun and and these other guys uh what was his name guy got shot by uh, Wallace Biggie oh Biggie. yeah Biggie Smalls right because they did that video where like, <laughs> says, you know, we'll be all up in the video yeah, right. <laughs> okay so when we talk about vertebra vertebra again something special just like this is something special and long bones are something special. Axial skeleton is something special. Does everyone agree? Because it's your vertebra that are going to maintain the weight of your skull, the weight of your upper limbs, the weight of your upper torso, and the weight of your lower, lower torso, and associated with the lower limbs. So it's distributing, the vertebra are designed to distribute the weight of the body onto the sacrum. Everybody got me? So the vertebra, one. All vertebras, all vertebra have bodies, except, there's always that exception, C1, which we call atlas. Atlas is nothing more than a ring of bone. A ring of bone. Now, two, all vertebra, I used to draw this out. I was like, you know what, I take you that long. Just gonna write it down. So all vertebra have transverse processes. Left and right transverse processes. Okay? So transverse processes like this. Trans, sorry. Transverse processes, spinous processes, 
and superior and inferior articulating processes. Damn, what man, Professor Pete, what's all that? It's like a puzzle, guys. It's where they attach. Look at the word. It tells you superior and inferior. Well, don't doesn't every vertebra have a vertebra above or below it? Except for C1. Yeah? Why do I say except for C1? Because it's between C2 and the occipital bone. You got me, guys? So you got to keep in mind, you have occipital. Then you have C1. So occipital bone, then C1. Then C1, C2, C2, C3, C3, C4, C4, C5, C5, C6. C7. So from C1 to C7, they call that cervical vertebra. As a group. They, as a group, function differently than the other vertebra. They all have similar structures. So this is what a typical vertebra looks like. They all have a body. They all have pedicles. They all have transverse processes. They all have lamina. So this is lamina. This is pedicle. This is transverse process. This is spinous process. So again, transverse process, left and right transverse processes. The body. Left and right transverse processes, left and right lamina, and left, left and right spinous processes. Guys, are you seeing something? I got different processes, yeah? So would that mean I have different centers of ossification? What do you think? Yeah, I got one center of ossification center here. I got another center of ossification center here and here. Another one for here and here. Another one for here and here. Another one for there. Everybody see that? And those centers of ossification, what are they surrounding, guys? What's in here? What would be there? Uh, a soft, uh, soft bone. Spinal cord. Spinal cord. Yeah. Because remember, brain is up here in the skull. All right, vertebra for what? Protection of the spinal cord. You get me? Yeah. Now imagine if I were to go around and say, all right, everybody, give me a ring. Give me a ring. And I take everybody's ring and I put one ring on top of the other ring, on top of the other ring, on top of the other ring, on top of the other ring. And my ring, my finger, is the spinal cord. My rings are my vertebrae. You see that? So I have all these rings. They're rings. That's what they're meant to be. But they're made, that ring is made by multiple centers of ossification occurring at the same time. Understand me? This is what makes vertebra different from endochondral bones versus intramembranous bones. And with this, you know, I mean, so C1 through C7 cervical vertebra, guys, sure enough, what makes them different? They're transverse processes. All cervical vertebrae transverse processes have foramen, referred to as transverse foramen. So transverse processes of all cervical vertebrae have transverse foramen. So what does that look like? All right. So if I were to change this general scenario, all I would do is make this fat and short and draw a hole in it. Everybody see that? And that's, that's basically C2 through C7 because C1 has no has no body. Remember, C1, atlas. It's a ring of bone. It looks like this. Okay. 
transverse processes, transverse foramen, spinous process, lamina, pedicles, but no body. Just a ring. Where did his body go? Where did the vertebral body of C1 go? Does it disappear? Uh -uh. It's on C2. So the so C2, C2 has a little extra. Severed of C2, so C2 sits under C1. Severed of it having its own body, C2 has this piece of bone sticking right up. Sticking right up like my thumb. Everybody see that? Mm -hmm. Coming right out. That was the body of C1. So that when you put C1 on there, then C1 will rotate like this over C2. See that? And then so occipital C1, that joint, guys, allows for the yes motion. And the joint between C1 and C2 will allow for the no motion. Because it looks like that piece of bone is sticking right up like that, and the ring is going around it. So this occipital to C1, occipital alanto joint. Everybody hear me? Occipital atlanto joint, because it's the occipital atlas joint. Everybody got me? Versus the axial atlanteal joint. Now, now notice, look at, watch my neck. When I do this, when I do yes, look at my full yes. Everybody see my full yes? My whole neck is flexing and extending, yeah? So it's not, it's not this and that, it's just this. Everybody see that? Just that little movement. As long as I, I keep this from moving. That little movement right there. That's occipital over C1. And this little movement here. So you can't see any of my other vertebrae move. It's just a little bit of movement right there. A little bit of no, not that little bit of movement. Like my, like my doggy does. When I give him the towel, he tries to get a little off. He was ready this morning. I go to dry and she knows he thinks I want to play. I want to play. I want to dry you up. He grabs the hand. Like, man, what's wrong with you? He's just let him, just let him do it. Just let him do it. So just this significant little move right here. That no, that's C1 over C2, guys. You get me? Now we can do side bending, right? We can do rotation, left and right rotation. Everybody see that? The extension and flex. Everybody got me? That's what C. Cervical vertebrae can do. So you got the yes, you got the no, and you got flexion extension. You got rotation left and right, okay? And then you got side bending. Can I side bend in my thoracics? We kind of need. I mean, I can't sort of. Yeah. And you want, should I should I stay like this? No. Why would I want to stay? Why would I not want to stay like this? Can I breathe like this? Normal. A lot harder, isn't it? Go ahead and keep yourself like this and then stay like this. Guys, this is what, anybody here got scoliosis? No. This is what scoliosis does. So scoliosis is the S-shaped curvature of a, of a vertebral column that should be straight. How is that possible? <laughs> leg length difference. Most of us are about a half inch difference in leg length. Normally. That more than a half inch difference will cause the shifting of your hip the hip will shift the sacrum. The sacrum will shift the lumbar. Lumbar will shift the thoracic. Thoracic will shift the cervical. And you'll come in complaining of headaches all the time. And then I'll look at your spine and you'll be scoliotic. You have that S shape. And then it's about me getting, getting physical with you. Because at that point, then we're going to be doing massive muscle massage and exercises to strengthen your core abdominal muscles as well as your upper thoracics in the back through exercise, right? To try and pull the vertebra back into place. So um, I injured my lower back once. I don't know if I'm gonna have permanent damage, but um, I used to work out a lot, and I don't know what's that exercise called. But when it's like it's kind of like squatting, but you use your um, you use your. You talking about a reverse squat where you put the weight on and then and then you push up? No. Um, or you put the weight over your over your like over you, your neck. You use your own. Um, the gastrocnemius muscles. Caps. Yeah, you caps. caps. It's gastrocnemius yeah. muscles. Yeah. So, so. And I was sweating so much that it accidentally slipped off uh -huh. and it hit my lower back. 
the only thing I got was like a bad bruise, but after that, I didn't go to the doctor. Again, it depends on how bad you actually injured it. So yeah, at some point you gotta go to the doctor to see if you've done any permanent damage. It was, it was 275. I've known people. I've known people who, whose vertebrae have cracked with you with less weight than that. So. And I can't like I know that I can't lean. Cause you know when you go to the bathroom and you want to look yourself in the mirror, I can't lean for too long when it's gonna hurt. Yeah, I mean you gotta go to the doctor and take a look, and see. You gotta do an MRI to see, cause it's 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 easy to see on the X-ray the, the vertebrae, but what you can't see is the mis is the true misalignment of the disc. So you can predict with the misalignment of the disc, because here's the thing, guys. Between each vertebra, notice that I between each vertebra. So if this is C1, this is C2. C1 and C2, there is no, there is no body against body, right? So there is no, because you have this piece of bone going up to allow for that movement, then there is no, there is no, there's no body, then there's no intervertebral disc. But when you get to then C3, if this is C3, then in between the body of C2 and the body of C3, you're gonna have that fibrocartilaginous disc in between. And of course, notice that C1 is actually the smallest uh, 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 of, the, of the vertebra. C2 then gets a little bit bigger, C3 gets a little bit bigger, C4, C5, C6, C7, they get bigger. As you go down thoracics, the bodies of each of the thoracic vertebrae will get bigger. Thoracics are T1, through T12. And associated with each thoracic vertebra, we have what? Left and right ribs. And ribs are associated with aiding in allowing the lung to be inflated and to keep the lung open so that air can come in. So you see why if, if I have a poor posture, right, due to whatever, including that poor enough posture that I have scoliosis, and my ribs aren't being able to help in elevating and keeping this volume sustained that would keep the lungs open, that would make it harder for you to breathe, breathe, that would increase your risk for lung infection. So someone who has scoliosis could come in with recurrent lung infections because of this lockdown of the ribs. So each of the thoracic vertebra guys, they have what? Ribs one through ribs 12. Well. What do we say the first seven ribs are? First seven ribs. So ribs one through seven are they're true ribs, right? Then ribs eight through twelve. Eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Yeah. Eight are false ribs. But of those only ribs 11 and 12 are considered to be floating because 8, 9, and 10 are connected to the cartilage of 7. Everybody, everybody give me? So if I draw, if I draw rib 1, rib 2, rib 3, rib 4, rib 5, rib 6, rib 7, right? And then I have my sternum my manubrium and my xiphoid process. I have coastal cartilage. I have coastal cartilage which connects this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy, this guy and this guy. The next three ribs, one, two, and three, they're gonna have, everybody see that? And then the last two, they're involved with sustaining the lateral abdominal musculature. They insert and reinforce the muscle of the lateral walls of our abdomen. This is why you, right, Miss Venezuela, don't get the 12th rib removed, why? right? Because you, on the backside, the 12th rib is what protects the lower pole of the kidney. So if you have both of those removed, now your kidney's floating around with no protection. If you, God forbid you get hit from behind, your kidney could explode. You could have contusion of the kidney and have kidney failure. You don't get those ribs removed just because you want that silhouette. All right? Wear yourself a bonus, right? 
suck it up and zip it up, right? And then watch yourself pass out, right? Like the corsets back in the day. <laughs> I don't know how we're going to use the word as corsets. It's crazy. Zip. Can't breathe. Can't breathe. You see why? Because the ribs need move. They need move. They need the ability to move up and down, guys. Because sure enough, when they associate it, thoracics, guys, don't have transverse processes with transverse foramen. They have transverse processes, and those transverse processes are associated with the ribs. So the ribs can do this up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, like a bucket handle. Up, down, up, down, up, down, up, down. And all of them are doing that. And that's what's aiding in your lungs being able to fill, or you're aiding in your lungs expiring. Inspiration versus expiration. So the thoracic cavity is specially designed. All right, guys? We're already in, you know, I already did bones of the skull. Uh, I talked about the bones of the face. I talked about the vertebra, right? So you guys should start hitting that second chapter, right? Instead of that first chapter, which we've already kind of went through and covered. Lots of pages. Yes, well, the homework is, this second homework is like 90 questions, but it, it's a lot of label. It's just a lot of label. I got it uh, today's attendance, yes, it's right here, guys. Make sure you put your name in attendance. Um, any questions? Yes. I put the first exam in your mail. Okay. Yeah. 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 So you just put up and the homework is 40%. And the homework is 40%. And then all the questions, any of the questions that you get on the final, come straight from the test. I mean, you can get a 67 average on all the tests, get all the homework done, right? and, and get a perfect score on the final, and get an A in the class. So, yeah, yeah. And that's why I tell people, don't get discouraged, buckle down, focus on what your weaknesses are, make them your strengths, right? Don't worry about what you didn't learn in the last exam. I mean, you got to go back and look at what you got wrong. Yeah, for the final. For the final. But the key is to get ready for this next test. And then again, so once each, you're done, everything. So each exam is 6%. That's right. Okay. Yes. All right, yes. thank you. Yes, yes, you're welcome. Two questions. Yeah. 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 Here, mm -hmm. the they're called canaliculi. They're, they're cellular extensions that'll 